This is Build a Big Podcast. I'm David Hooper. A few episodes ago, I tested a $5 popper stopper called the popper blocker. (laughs) It's a piece of material. It goes inside a ball mic. And when you've got it inside that mic, you apparently don't have to have what I call a mic condom, big piece of foam, or the traditional popper blocker, windscreen. I don't know what you want to call it. Basically, the piece that goes in front of the mic that diffuses the air. So when you say, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers or something of that nature with a lot of P's and B's, you don't have plosives. I thought I was doing something wrong. So what I did is I took the popper blocker with my very favorite super cheap mic, the GLS 58, into the studio with me. I had my engineer, Stephanie Lesher, take a look at it. So what you're going to hear is a conversation between me and Stephanie. You're going to hear two different mics on this recording. You're going to hear the $29 GLS 58, which is a Shure SM58 knockoff. And I love it because it's all metal. It's great for portable recording. I don't use it in the studio. And you're going to hear a broadcast mic known as the RE20. Now on this recording, Stephanie says it's about $300. I looked it up. Price at BSW, about $350, which by the way, the mic that I'm speaking into right now, which is called a BP40 by Audio-Technica, also about $350. So you've got three microphones on this episode. You've got two broadcast mics, this one that I'm speaking into now, the one that I will be speaking into on this recording that you hear, and you are going to hear Stephanie. She's going to switch back and forth between an RE20, that broadcast mic, and also my favorite cheap mic the $29 GLS 58. You're going to walk away with two things from this recording. One, is it worth paying 10 times as much money for your microphone? Two, does the popper blocker work? This is from a real audio engineer, not just me. So she's doing this thing right. My conversation with Stephanie, here it is. My own voice. Okay. Check, pop, pop. Actually, yeah, there's not, I don't know. This doesn't, I don't hear that much actually. Say Peter Piper pick a pick. Peter Piper. Oh, actually, yeah. No. Peter Piper. (laughs) Pickles. Peter Piper picked pickles. No, a a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. (laughs) All right, hold on. Explain to us. So this is an RE20. Okay, so this is an RE20 with a nice... Mike condom. Mike condom. Peter Piper picked a... Yeah, that sounds so much better. I know. See, well, okay. And but, then... But, but, hold on. Then let's but, take the... But do you think... Peter piped... That's still better. I think part of it's the microphone. And this is a thing... Okay. Can I just... Explain it. Yeah. If somebody's going to ask me a question about this at one of these things, this is what I would tell them. Yeah. You can get that cheap microphone. You can get that knockoff 58. You can get a real 58. It's not the same as a broadcast microphone. It's just not... And that's fine because not everybody needs a broadcast microphone. But 58s are going to pick up a lot more of that pop than an RE20. It's just how it is. Do you think you're too close to it? What if you had it like this? Do you think it's going to be better? Like It'd probably be a little better. With, you probably don't want to be right on eight that Eight inches one. away? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I, don't know I was so hopeful. Things. I mean, it's... Here, let me... Yeah. We're back. Okay. Back on the GS58. Yeah. I mean, it'll definitely Peter piped. You can still, it's really weird though. Hold it six inches away from you. Peter, Peter picked some peppers. Yeah. But then you're not getting that. Like, I mean, oh, you can't hear me right now because you don't have headphones on. I mean, and you can EQ, you know, but this has such a more brittle sound. It's a thin sound. Yeah. Yeah. Very thin. All right. Sorry, I'm just so, trashing your microphone. <laughs> no, the mic. No, the, look, the microphone is thirty bucks, but but yeah. but filter is what I'm interested in. Five dollars, and I was like thrilled because for portable use, the real test is taking it out of here and hearing what this particular one sounds like. It's better than it was. Okay. But do you record with SM58s ever on like li- live stuff? You do, right? Um, not for an interview. Okay. Because when I do live sound, it's like very simple. It's like very stripped down. I don't I don't go like crazy with it. And like live sound SM58s are fantastic. If I'm here, I'm not going to do that unless I really have to. If I'm in a pinch. What about like a live panel though? Yeah, I think that. 
We used to have SA58. Yeah, I mean, for that, I think it's just a different thing. Do you think this would help? Oh, this sounds weird. (laughs) (laughs) All right, I'm back. Is the mic hotter? The GS58 hotter? Definitely, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like way... Like way hotter, yeah. Yeah. Um, Which you can probably see on my screen behind me. Yeah. Which that's not necessarily... I mean, that's fine. That's not a bad thing, but... Yeah. It just depends on what you're going for. So would you spend $5... To get a pop filter like this, do you think it helps at all? Or are you better off with well, like a foam cover? It, you're better off with a foam cover for sure. Well, maybe, okay, I shouldn't sound that confident. No, because, I think because that you I, are I think, better off with a foam but cover. But I think for traveling, though, you can understand why that why there would be people who would be excited about this because you don't have to worry. The foam covers get destroyed. Yeah, but they're also like a dollar. <laughs> Keeping it real. <laughs> like... <laughs> I don't actually know how much they are. I should. Okay, should so look that so up. this is not recommended by you. By me, but you know who am I? Well, you know more than me <laughs> when it comes to microphones. <laughs> and again, I that don't was know. So helpful. I I'd be interested to hear that in a regular fifty-eight. I don't know. I don't know much about that microphone. I don't. I don't think I like this it. This microphone I've tested against the fifty-eight. It, it's fairly. It's fairly honest. It's fairly honest. It's not going to be as good. It's 30 bucks, but I'm pretty sure it's the same factory even from China. It looks, yeah. And they just put a sticker on it and try to get away with it. Yeah. It's not a broadcast mic, and I think that you're right about it. You can't... What, how much are these microphones? Like $400? No, not that much. Oh, which ones? The ones the, I'm using right now? RE20. I think they're like 300 Okay. Yeah, so think. compared to 99 or in this case, yeah. 30 so. I think if you're going to do a podcast... Get it. Yeah, a 58's fine. That's great. It's totally fine. I'm not trying to talk people out of getting a 58. Don't buy your microphones at Radio Shack. That's all I'm saying. But you're not going to get the deep, You might not get the deep, voice. dulcet tones that you hear right now. <laughs> like, if you listen back to this, I know you don't have headphones on right now, but if you listen back to this, my voice sounds very different. I sound really annoying. And I would EQ it, you know, but some people might not want to have to deal with that. But, like, I would EQ it. I would take, like, some of the harshness out of myself Yeah. on that one. It sounds thin. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I naturally sound a little more soothing on here. Watch out, Delilah. I'm coming for you. <laughs> now, Stephanie Lesher, she's been working with me for at least a couple years on my show, Music Business Radio. She's fantastic. Side note. If you're interested in a girl engineer, somebody to bring a girl perspective to your editing, she can hook you up. We record on Pro Tools. She mentioned this on the recording. She does live sound. My show actually has a lot of live performances. So we have bands in all the time that she's recording. And of course, she's great at talk radio, great at podcast. If you're interested in getting in touch with her, reach out to me. Bigpodcast.com is how to do that. I will put you in touch with Stephanie because she is available for side work. As for me, if you want to hear more from me, I'm here all the time. And if you go to bigpodcast.com slash subscribe, you can subscribe to build a big podcast. There are three buttons for you, one for iPhone, one for Android, and one for an RSS feed. So you can get build a big podcast wherever you get your podcast. That's bigpodcast.com slash subscribe to do that. And while you were there, get my free podcast toolkit. This is available free for a limited time. It's got social media templates, release forms, ways to interact with your audience, episode templates. There are about 11 different things in there to help you have a bigger, better podcast. It's going to help you connect with your audience, reach more people, and make more money while spreading your message. That is available while you are at bigpodcast.com. So sign up for that. Right now it is free, and I will see you on the next episode of Build a Big Podcast.